I'm Sarah Meyer, a Principal Legal Advisor at Make UK, and in this short video, recorded on the 6th of July 2021, I'll be talking about the overseas travel testing and quarantine rules that apply to individuals entering England and their implications for employers. I should just flag, I'm focusing only on the rules for England because the devolved administrations have their own powers in this area, so the position in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland might be slightly different. After a long time under lockdown, many employees may wish to holiday abroad now that things have begun to open up, but the quarantine rules might mean they need to take extra time off work to self-isolate when they return. It's therefore really important for employers to understand the rules and consider how they will handle the employment implications. And we've produced a guide to help you with this, which I'll introduce in this video. I'll start by giving a brief summary of the overseas travel rules before talking about our guide and how it can help you. At the end of the video, I'll provide details of where you can access the guide, as well as other Make UK resources and support. Under the overseas travel rules, all individuals, including British citizens, who return to England from overseas must take pre and post travel tests and provide their contact information to the border authorities. The pre travel test can be a PCR or LFD test, while the post travel tests are PCR tests. Additional requirements depend on which category of country the individual has been in during the 10 days before they arrive here. The government has classified countries according to their COVID-19 risk level based on rates of transmission and the progress of the country's vaccination programme and has placed them on green, amber and red lists, with the countries on the green list being those at the lowest risk. The requirements are summarised on the slide. Significantly for employers, Unless an individual has travelled only to countries on the government's green list, they must self-isolate for a 10-day quarantine period on their return. Quarantine self-isolation means that an employee will be unable to attend the workplace. And if they've been in or through a red list country, they can't quarantine at home, but must instead stay in a managed quarantine hotel for the 10-day isolation period. Employees who don't comply could face fines or potential prosecution and it's an offence for an employer to require an employee to attend the workplace in breach of quarantine rules. Although there's no need to quarantine on return from a green list country, many popular holiday destinations aren't on the green list. You may well have employees who wish to travel to amber or even red list countries, and countries that are on the green list now might be moved to the amber or red list if their COVID risk increases. Also, while it has been suggested that the government may remove the requirement to quarantine on return from an amber list country for those who've had two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine, this has not yet been confirmed, and not all employees will have had both jabs, so it's important that you decide how you'll treat quarantine periods. Deciding on your policy for managing employees' overseas travel and potential quarantine will involve consideration of various key issues, and our HR guide, Overseas Holidays and Quarantine Requirements, is intended to help you do this. For example, it may seem sensible to allow employees who can do so to work remotely during quarantine, but how will you deal with those who cannot? Are you concerned about the potential employee relations issues that could arise as a result of treating employees differently, depending on whether or not they can work remotely? If employees cannot work remotely, or you decide not to allow this, will you require them to book extra holiday to cover quarantine? What if an employee doesn't have enough holiday left? And how will you tackle operational difficulties if too many employees are off work at any given time? Our guide identifies these and other strategic questions to help you determine what approach you might want to take to different scenarios so that you can develop a policy going forwards. Of course, whatever approach you choose to take, it is important to communicate your policy clearly in order to avoid any misunderstandings or disputes. And even with a policy in place, issues can arise that you're not sure how to tackle, including where holiday requests were agreed before your policy was implemented. In those circumstances, Make UK members can seek specific guidance from our team of expert legal advisors, and we can also provide advice to non-members on a consultancy basis. I hope you've found this short video helpful. Details of where you can access the guide and how you can contact us if you need further advice are set out on the slide. Thank you very much for listening.